Johnny Carson, the legendary host of The Tonight Show for 30 years, had a knack for making his guests feel at ease. Yet, behind the scenes, he wasn't afraid to banish celebrities from his show. Curious about who made his infamous blacklist and why? 1. Sylvester Stallone It's hard to imagine an icon like Sylvester Stallone being shut out of any show, but Johnny Carson's world is full of surprises. Stallone, who skyrocketed to fame with his role as Rocky Balboa in the 1980s, was once a regular on The Tonight Show, where he effortlessly connected with Carson and captivated the audience. Yet, there's a chapter in this story that remains shrouded in mystery. Stallone's appearances on the show came to an abrupt halt, and by the time Carson signed off in 1992, Stallone was noticeably absent, leaving fans and observers puzzled. Whispers soon emerged suggesting that Stallone had become unreliable, missing promotional commitments and canceling appearances. These actions, coupled with Carson's growing frustration with Stallone's perceived arrogance, led to a dramatic fallout. Carson, disillusioned by Stallone's behavior, removed him from his guest list and severed all ties. Though Stallone's presence faded from Carson's stage, his career didn't falter. He continued to soar, maintaining a strong presence in the industry and earning respect for his enduring contributions. 2. Frank Sinatra Frank Sinatra, the iconic Old Blue Eyes and a celebrated member of the Rat Pack, wasn't immune to Johnny Carson's formidable presence. Despite Sinatra's unparalleled success in music and film, his relationship with Carson was marked by an underlying tension. Behind the glitz of his career and the allure of his celebrity status, Sinatra faced unexpected exclusion from The Tonight Show. Carson, known for his keen judgment, was reportedly unsettled by Sinatra's powerful persona and rumored connections with organized crime. This unease translated into a cautious approach, leading Carson to limit Sinatra's appearances. The distrust was mutual. Sinatra wasn't keen on forging a closer bond with Carson either. Even with his reduced presence on The Tonight Show, Sinatra's career flourished. Carson, on the other hand, gravitated toward guests and musical acts that mirrored his own Midwestern sensibilities. The interactions between Carson and Sinatra, brief as they were, hinted at a lack of chemistry. The complexities of their relationship came into sharper focus years later, when Ed McMahon, Carson's co-host, revealed in his memoir, Here's Johnny, a telling moment at a Manhattan piano bar. Sinatra's surprise appearance during an impromptu musical session led to an intense confrontation with Carson. This rare moment of tension offered a glimpse into the strained dynamic between these two legends, adding depth to Carson's storied career. 3. Rodney Dangerfield Rodney Dangerfield, the legendary comedian known for his iconic I Don't Get No Respect line, had a tumultuous relationship with Johnny Carson and The Tonight Show. Despite the admiration of the audience and Dangerfield's undeniable comedic talent, he often felt a distinct lack of enthusiasm from Carson. Dangerfield's self-deprecating humor, encapsulated in jokes like, I took out a belly dancer, she told me I turned her stomach mirrored his deep-seated feeling of being undervalued. Dangerfield harbored a belief that Carson failed to recognize the full extent of his popularity and unique comedic style. He felt that Carson's indifference reflected a broader disregard for the hard work and dedication behind his act. This tension led to interviews that sometimes felt strained, with Dangerfield's appearances on the show becoming increasingly sporadic over time. Although never explicitly banned, misunderstandings and Dangerfield's growing suspicion about his place in Carson's world created a noticeable distance. Complicating matters further were business interests. Dangerfield owned a well-known comedy club and used his appearances to promote his events. This merging of personal interests with his show spots did not always sit well with Carson's booking team. The resulting friction, combined with Dangerfield's own discomfort, ensured that while he remained a beloved figure, his relationship with Carson never reached the effortless ease of Carson's closest guests. 4. Howie Mandel Howie Mandel, once a rising star in the comedy world, faced a tough break early in his career on The Tonight Show. His vibrant, high-energy style clashed with Johnny Carson's more restrained comedic preferences, leading to Mandel being placed on Carson's blacklist. Unlike Rodney Dangerfield, whose jokes hit the mark with Carson, Mandel's zany humor didn't resonate with the host. 
The pivotal moment came in 1979, when Mandel appeared on the show with a bit involving a ballooned-up glove stuck to his head. Carson's dismissal of the prop before Mandel could land his punchline spoke volumes about the mismatch in their comedic sensibilities. Carson's reaction underscored the tight control he maintained over the show's tone and guest interactions. Mandel's experience revealed the high stakes of meeting Carson's comedic standards. Those who failed to align with Carson's style faced the risk of falling out of favor and losing future opportunities. Mandel's exclusion from the show highlighted Carson's firm grip on the guest list and the overall atmosphere of The Tonight Show. Despite this setback, Howie Mandel didn't let the rejection define him. He went on to achieve significant success, with standout roles in movies like Gremlins, and a later triumph as the host of CNBC's Deal or No Deal. Mandel's career trajectory showcases his resilience and ability to thrive beyond the confines of Carson's show, proving his versatility and enduring appeal as a performer. 5. Kathleen Turner Kathleen Turner, an icon of Hollywood with a dazzling array of awards including two Golden Globes, a Grammy, and two Tony Awards, faced an unexpected twist in her storied career. Turner, who first captured the public's imagination as the sultry Maddie Walker in the 1981 film Body Heat, was celebrated as a sex symbol of the 1980s. Her rising fame made her a sought-after guest on television shows, including The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. But behind the glamorous facade, Turner encountered an unexpected setback. Her appearances on Carson's show were marked by a tension that became a part of Hollywood lore. Stories suggest that Turner's confident, sometimes diva-like presence did not sit well with Johnny Carson. Known for his easygoing, conversational style, Carson reportedly found Turner's demeanor jarring. Her apparent indifference to the significance of late-night talk shows was perceived as a slight against Carson's realm, a slight that stung deeply. This perceived disrespect led Carson to exclude Turner from future invitations, coinciding with a dip in her mainstream visibility. Yet, Turner's story didn't end in the shadows of late-night TV. Her extraordinary talent and relentless dedication saw her transition to Broadway, where she reclaimed her place in the spotlight. Her career took on new life with critically acclaimed stage performances, proving that her impact on the arts extended far beyond the confines of television. In the end, Turner's journey from Hollywood's heights to a renewed success on stage reflects her resilience and enduring artistry. 6. Dana Carvey Dana Carvey was once the shining star of Saturday Night Live, known for his hypersyncopated impressions and spot-on mimicry. From 1986 to 1993, his unique comedic style, including iconic characters like the Church Lady and razor-sharp parodies of figures such as George Bush and Johnny Carson, made him a favorite among audiences. At the peak of his career, Carvey was a comedy force to be reckoned with, seizing every opportunity to capitalize on his late-night fame. In 1991, during the height of his popularity, he made multiple appearances on The Tonight Show. This time, Carvey was there to promote Wayne's World, the film adaptation of the SNL skit that had cemented his place in pop culture. Yet, rather than sticking to film promotion or revisiting beloved sketch material, Carvey chose to use his appearance to showcase his remarkable impressions of Carson and other talk show hosts. This act of self-referential humor, intended as a playful nod from one master mimic to another, did not land as expected. Carson, known for his meticulous control over his show's tone, found the unexpected jabs at his own expense uncomfortable. The playful teasing crossed an unspoken boundary for Carson, leading him to quietly place Carvey on a blacklist. The door to further collaborations between the two comedy titans was quietly closed, marking a sudden end to the crossover potential of a comedian who seemed destined to inherit the comedy throne. 7. Sandra Bernhard Sandra Bernhard, born on June 6, 1955, in Flint, Michigan, was destined for the spotlight from the start. Raised in a conservative Jewish family with three older brothers, her early life seemed stable. But at just 10 years old, everything shifted when her family moved to Arizona. She graduated from Saguaro High School in Scottsdale in 1973, and her adventurous spirit led her to Israel that same year, where she spent seven months at Kibbutz Caviar Kim. She would return to Israel during the tumultuous Yom Kippur War, a sign of her determination and resilience. 
As she found her voice at the comedy store, Bernhard's career began to soar. Her sharp wit and fearless humor caught the eye of many, landing her a role on The Richard Pryor Show in 1977 and frequent spots on talk shows. The real turning point came in 1981 when Martin Scorsese cast her as the intense fan Masha in The King of Comedy. This role not only showcased her talent, but also earned her the National Society of Film Critics Award for Best Supporting Actress. Her appearances on David Letterman's Late Night with David Letterman further cemented her place in comedy. Yet beneath the surface of her growing fame, there were challenges. Bernhard's edgy humor and political commentary stirred the waters on The Tonight Show, where she was a frequent guest. But by 1988, she was mysteriously absent from the show. The speculation? That her bold, sometimes controversial skits crossed a line for Johnny Carson, whose approval was paramount. Though she was never officially banned, Bernhard's outspoken nature and political remarks seemed to have sealed her fate, keeping her off Carson's stage and away from the limelight she once knew so well. 8. Bob Hope even Bob Hope, a towering figure in comedy, couldn't escape the shadow of an unexpected ban from The Tonight Show. Despite his celebrated career and reaching the remarkable age of 100, there was a deeper story behind his public persona. Hope's once great rapport with Johnny Carson soured, revealing the struggles he faced in his later years. It all came to a head when Hope, whose memory had begun to falter, demanded Carson adhere to a strict list of questions for his appearance on the show. This rigid format clashed with Carson's love for spontaneous, witty exchanges, leaving the host frustrated and constrained. Andrew Nichols, Carson's former co-head writer, paints a picture of Carson feeling exhausted and stifled by Hope's inflexible approach. Carson, known for his effortless charm and quick thinking, found himself at odds with Hope's prepared script. It wasn't just a clash of styles, but a reflection of Carson's desire for genuine, unscripted conversation. Richard Zinn's book, Hope, Entertainer of the Century, reveals that despite Hope's public appeal and his signature comedic moments, he was Carson's least favorite guest. Carson's respect for Hope's career didn't translate into admiration for his predictable routines. Adding to the tension was Hope's habit of appearing on the show, primarily to promote his latest projects, a practice that further strained their relationship. This combination led Carson to quietly banish Hope from the show, highlighting his preference for authentic, engaging dialogue over scripted performances. 9. Wayne Newton Wayne Newton, once celebrated as the vibrant star of the entertainment world, and Johnny Carson, the undisputed king of late-night television, began their relationship amidst shared friends and mutual admiration. However, beneath the surface of their seemingly friendly bond, a simmering feud brewed for decades. Newton, the legendary pop icon known for his chart-topping hits, was a regular guest on Carson's famed Tonight Show. Yet, their once warm rapport deteriorated, culminating in a dramatic fallout that ended Newton's appearances on the show. Their discord, marked by a series of personal insults and even legal disputes, stands out as one of the most intense celebrity rivalries of our time. The trouble began when Carson, known for his sharp wit, started making jokes about Newton's appearance and masculinity. What began as lighthearted banter quickly escalated into relentless mockery, with Carson enlisting fellow comedians to join in. Despite Newton's attempts to resolve the issue privately, spending months in quiet negotiations, the taunts continued unabated. In an interview with the Review Journal, Newton recalled his frustration. He was very angry with me and started jokes on his show, with other comedians chiming in about my lack of manhood. I felt these jokes were completely unjustified. As the mockery persisted, Newton's frustration boiled over. In a dramatic public confrontation, he challenged Carson on national television, but this only fueled the fire. In a desperate move, Newton stormed into NBC's studios, confronting Carson and producer Fred de Cordova, threatening violence if the jokes didn't stop. Although Carson downplayed the encounter, the hostility remained palpable. The feud reached its peak when Newton acquired the Aladdin Hotel in 1980, a coveted property for Carson. This act only deepened their rivalry, with Newton's associates, including close friends, being banned from The Tonight Show. The bitterness of their dispute became a defining chapter in their intertwined histories. 
10. Lola Falana Lola Falana, once a shining star of American entertainment, faced an unexpected setback in her career. Known for her stunning beauty and charismatic presence, Falana was a beloved television fixture in the 1970s, often appearing on The Tonight Show and other variety shows. However, her rising fame took a hit when her manager announced that Falana was no longer welcome on the show. Rumors suggested that this ban was linked to her close association with Wayne Newton, amid Johnny Carson's well-known feud with Newton. Although Falana never addressed the situation publicly, speculation ran high. In February 1981, the Lexington Herald highlighted the tension between Carson and Newton, exacerbated by Carson's resentment over Newton's acquisition of the Aladdin Hotel. Despite this professional setback, Falana's resilience was evident as she continued to thrive, collaborating with Catholic artist Joseph Lee Hooker on the song Don't Cry Mary in 1995. After retiring from the limelight, Falana shifted her focus to personal missions. She now travels across the country spreading messages of hope and spirituality while quietly living in Las Vegas. Her ministry, Lambs of God, is dedicated to supporting orphan children in sub-Saharan Africa, showcasing her commitment to making a difference. Falana's personal life also drew attention, particularly her affair with Sammy Davis Jr., which led to Davis's divorce from Mae Britt. Her subsequent marriage to Feliciano Butch Tavares Jr. also ended in divorce. Despite the ban from Carson's show, Falana's enduring strength and impact remain a testament to her remarkable journey. 11. Rich Little Rich Little, known for his remarkable talent in impersonations, faced an unexpected twist in his career that revealed a side of Hollywood's complex dynamics. Born in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, Little was the second of three sons. His father, Lawrence Little, was a respected surgeon who served in the Royal Canadian Naval Volunteer Reserve during World War II and later worked for the Department of Veterans Affairs until his passing in 1959. His mother, Elizabeth Maud Wilson, managed the household with a gentle grace. Little's heritage is deeply rooted in Canadian history, with his father's English background and his mother's Irish lineage. He descends from John Wilson, who once served as the Speaker of the Fifth Parliament of Upper Canada, and his great-grandfather, William Carruthers Little, who was a member of the Canadian House of Commons. His early years were marked by a formative experience at the Liskard Collegiate Institute, where he joined forces with Jeff Scott, an aspiring impressionist who later turned to politics. Together, they captivated audiences with their imitations of Canadian figures like Prime Minister John Diefenbaker. Despite his success, Little's journey in Hollywood wasn't without its challenges. His talent made him a frequent guest on The Tonight Show, where his portrayals of figures like Richard Nixon and Jimmy Stewart delighted audiences. Yet, the humor he brought to the show did not always sit well with Johnny Carson. A pivotal moment came in 1976 when Little, in a bold move, impersonated Carson himself on the show without prior notice. Carson, known for his sensitivity, took the impersonation personally. This incident led to Little being barred from The Tonight Show, a decision that seemed to cast a shadow over his career. Reflecting on this period in a 2021 interview with Sunday Morning, Little expressed his confusion, admitting, I must have upset someone or Johnny just grew tired of me mimicking him. Despite never returning to the show, Little eventually found a moment of reconciliation with Carson years later at a Malibu restaurant. Carson approached him to inquire if he still performed impressions of him. Little reassured Carson that his impressions were still a hit with audiences, offering a sense of closure and mutual respect between the two. 12. Joan River Joan River's ban from The Tonight Show stemmed from a significant rift with Johnny Carson, marking one of the most infamous disputes in television history. Rivers, a trailblazer in comedy, gained fame through shows like The Apprentice and Fashion Police, where she made her mark with sharp celebrity fashion critiques. Her journey into the male-dominated world of stand-up comedy, which began in the 1950s, was both groundbreaking and challenging. Rivers first appeared on NBC's The Tonight Show in 1965. Her performance was impressive enough to secure her a writing position on the show, and she eventually became a guest host. Her chemistry with Carson seemed promising until their relationship soured in the mid-1980s. Rivers was subsequently banned from appearing on the show, 
The catalyst for this falling out was Rivers' decision to launch her own late night show on Fox, The Late Show with Joan Rivers. Carson was reportedly upset that she hadn't informed him about her new venture. Rivers later shared in an essay for The Hollywood Reporter that she had tried to give Carson a heads up about her new show, but he responded coldly. Despite Rivers' attempts to mend fences whenever they crossed paths, Carson remained unyielding. Rivers speculated that Carson's bitterness was rooted in her defiance of traditional roles and her challenge to his professional dominance. As she put it, I think he really felt that because I was a woman, I was somehow his possession, and that I wouldn't leave him. It's a warped perspective, but I never quite understood it.